It is no mystery that the entire natural world runs on water. Approximately 97% of the world's water supply is contained in salt water in our oceans. 2% of that water is iced in either ice caps or other natural means, and only 1% of that water supply is in current freshwater sources, such as freshwater rivers and lakes. In order to sustain natural life, water follows a very complicated path or cycle known as the hydrologic cycle, also known as the water cycle. This water cycle is the processes by which water circulates between the Earth's oceans, atmosphere, and land, involving precipitation as rain and snow, drainage in streams and rivers, and return to the atmosphere by evaporation and transpiration. So in a brief overview, rain turns into runoff on the ground, then evaporates and transpirates into the atmosphere, or it'll flow as groundwater into open water, where it eventually evaporates again, becomes condensation, and then the cycle repeat. The water cycle can be summed up in this diagram here, where you see the water forming in clouds, raining, becoming runoff, and then eventually re-entering the atmosphere. So how does this water finally make it to the surface? Well, this is known as precipitation. Precipitation is condensed water vapor that falls to the Earth's surface, and most precipitation occurs as rain. Some of it will eventually come as either snow, ice, or sleep. Only less than 10% of the moisture that passes through the Earth's surface is precipitated, and precipitation may fall as snow, rain, sleet, or hail. Eventually that precipitation turns into runoff, which is the variety of ways by which water moves across the land. This includes both surface runoff and channel runoff. You can see in the stream flow diagram here how the water is moving through the surface and how it infiltrates into the soil. It can be divided into three main points. Surface runoff, which is water running off land surface. Inner flow, which is runoff that is infiltrated into the subsurface and is moving towards a water body. And then groundwater, which is slower base flow that is infiltrated deep into the soil layer. So how does water infiltrate? Well, infiltration is the flow of water from the ground surface into the ground. Once infiltrated, the water becomes soil moisture or groundwater. If you've ever taken water and dumped it over a pile of sand, you notice that the water disappears and moves into the soil. That would be an example of infiltration, and water infiltrates differently in different kinds of soil. Water may continue to open water through the soil, and filtering may also occur along this path. This is known as percolations. Another process occurs called transpiration, which is the release of water vapor from plants and soil into the air. Now we know some natural organisms, such as plants, and animals and humans on the earth will consume water, but we know some of that water will be released from the plants into the air. Just like I said, some of the water may be consumed by plants, but the rest is released through transpiration. The water then makes its eventual move to open water sources. This includes water bodies such as oceans, lakes, rivers, and streams. All water eventually ends up in an open water body, if not consumed by plants or organisms. Then finally, when it reaches that open water body, it'll eventually evaporate into the atmosphere through evaporation, which is the transformation of water from liquid to gas phases as it moves from the ground or bodies of water into the overlying atmosphere. The source of energy for evaporation is primary solar radiation provided by our sun. This is how the water returns to the atmosphere. This allows for the creation of clouds through condensation, the transformation of water vapor to liquid water droplets in the air creating clouds and fogs. Now for snow, it follows a very similar cycle for snow. It just remains in, di in a different form for longer and then eventually melts to continue this water cycle. So you can see in this diagram here how the water cycle comes together. Like I said, the rain forms in these clouds, it falls in the soil where it'll eventually infiltrate and move to open water sources or percolate through different soil layers. Transpiration allows for the release of water from plants and soil back into the air and then eventually as water makes its way to open water bodies, it'll eventually evaporate back into the clouds into the atmosphere, restarting the cycle. This cycle is very important for the sustenance of life on this planet and allows organisms to consume fresh water as their source for life. So that is the water cycle. If you have any questions, leave it down below in a comment, but that is a basic overview of how the hydrologic cycle works on our planet.